from Jewel For Real. Today's video is my 16 week bump date. I can't believe I'm 16 weeks already and I'm having the 16 week bump date. It seems to be going by pretty fast right now, like I had said in another prior video, but yeah, it probably won't be going as fast for me in the third trimester. I know from experience. In today's video, we are gonna talk about my last birth center appointment because I had it like a week ago. We're gonna talk about my baby movements. We're gonna show you my baby bump and we're gonna reveal the gender. Yes, the gender. I mean, some of you may already know the gender by looking on our vlogs for Family For Real because we have already announced it, but I'm announcing it officially on Jewel For Real. Stay tuned. Well guys, here is my 16 week belly. Um, it's kind of camouflaged by this. Like I said, when I go out in the public, I usually make it more uncamouflaged. From this side. So, I don't mind, I have some stretch marks, but that's okay. I have gone through four other pregnancies, so, so there we go, there's like the side shots. So it's getting there, it's getting bigger. I am so excited guys. I'm so excited because I actually felt the baby move between 14 and 16 weeks. So that's something I have, like usually I don't feel the baby move for my babies until I'm like 18 weeks. So this is a little earlier for me. I think usually because my placenta is usually like posterior or something, so it's harder to feel. This time around, I have no idea where my, where my placenta is, but I think it must be facing the other way because it makes it easier to feel. I've been feeling little kicks. I mean, obviously the baby's still very little. The baby's still very small, but I felt the baby move distinctly in the bottom right corner. And it was so amazing. Like it was definitely the baby kicking and it just felt so neat because every, even though I've experienced this, Four other times, nothing beats feeling it again, even though I've already experienced it. One thing I have to talk about that I don't know if other women experience when they're pregnant, but whenever I hate brushing my teeth when I'm pregnant, I hate it. Every time I brush my teeth, I gag. Um, yeah, like not in the front. I'm talking about like getting the back teeth. Every time I get the back teeth, I can't hardly make it through my brushing teeth experience. And hopefully I'm getting my teeth brushed okay. This is probably why I end up with cavities. For 27 years, I had zero cavities. Then what happened at 27 years old? I had my first baby. First baby, I got a cavity. Second baby, I got two cavities. Third baby, I got three cavities. So of course, when I had my fourth baby, I thought, oh no, here comes four cavities. But I actually only had one on the fourth one. But still, like I think it has to do with like the calcium being sucked from your body. But also, you can't brush your teeth as well. You're constantly gagging. I also wanted to go over, guys, the prenatal I take. I never talked about it before in the other videos. The prenatal I've taken for four out of five of my kids. The only prenatal, the only time I didn't take this prenatal was with Talia. And I forget which one I took with her, but it wasn't a whole food based prenatal like I did with the other four kids. I choose to take something whole food based because whole food based is more natural. It is absorbed better in your body. It, the body recognizes it more because it's not like artificial supplements. It's like whole food based. So it recognizes it as whole food. I, I've been taking that and even though it's more expensive, I feel like it's worth it. And this is what I've been taking, mega food. It's by Mega Food. It's called Baby and Me. And I actually, there's Baby and Me 1 and Baby and Me 2. I take the number 2 one because the number 2 one is, you only have to take two tablets a day. Where if you get the other one that doesn't say Baby Me 2, you have to take four a day. But it supports the health of mother and developing child. It has, um, yeah, it says fresh from the farm to you with brown rice, carrots, broccoli, and oranges. It's a pre and postnatal supplement. I actually take this, I actually take this even when I'm not pregnant because they actually tell you that it's good to take stuff like this when you're not pregnant because it's like prenatal vitamins are supposed to be very good for your hair and nails because they have extra folic acid in it. I also take 
Krill oil, um, which is, is um, important for like a developing baby um, when they're in your womb, and also when they're out of your womb and you're nursing them, is a fish oil. But uh, I used to take fish oil, like regular fish oil, the cod liver oil, but now I take krill oil because krill oil has been shown to be even better than cod liver oil. But it's supposed to be just good for, the, like I said, the developing baby. I really like my prenatal vitamin and I stuck with it for like the other four pregnancies. One thing I noticed with this pregnancy is that I have to get up slowly. If I get up slowly, I won't really puke and I won't really gag. If I just get up slowly with a slow process within like after I wake up within 30 minutes, then I'll be fine. But if I like have to be somewhere and I have to rush around and I don't have time to like get up slowly, those are the times that I usually get sick and I gag and I puke. I always hate the mornings that I have to rush around and just try to get out the door because I know what's coming. You know, the next three days I have to take the kids to a summer camp and I have to be there like 8.45 in the morning and it takes like a half hour to get there. So I'm not looking forward to next, the next three mornings because I'm probably going to be up chucking. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people around, like I'm 16 weeks pregnant and a lot of people, like their, their nausea and vomiting subside by now. But for me, for each pregnancy, it seems like it comes late. Like it doesn't come until like eight to 10 weeks pregnant. Then it just like gets worse. And then it doesn't go away until like 20 weeks. That's weird to me is actually I feel like my nausea and vomiting are worse now than they were a month ago. I'm a late bloomer, I guess. One thing too with being 16 weeks pregnant, I want it to be obvious I'm pregnant now when I go out in public. You don't wanna wear things that hide your belly now because even trying to hide your belly at this point, you just look like you're chunky. And I'd rather have people know that I'm pregnant and have it be obvious that I'm pregnant then have them be second guessing themselves. Usually when I go out in public and I'm not at home, I try to wear very form fitting shirts that make it pretty obvious that I'm pregnant. I just, I mean, to me, I'd rather have it that way now than people thinking, is she pregnant or is she just gaining some weight? <laughs> just recently, between 14 and 16 weeks pregnant, I also went to an amusement park with my family called Knoebels. And one thing I realized when I was there is I really miss being able to go on to like amusement park rides or water park rides. We can't go to at a water park this year because I don't. We don't feel like paying like honestly 40, 50 dollars for me to go just to like watch everybody else go on the rides. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of a bummer to me because I really love rides and so, but I feel blessed. Like I feel so grateful and so blessed to be able to get pregnant because I know that it's, you know, not something that everybody can do and that people have, you know, have great problems with being able to get pregnant and, and I'm really, it really makes me, it really makes me grateful that I don't have that problem. It's taken me, for the, the longest it's taken me to get pregnant is four months. I know like even just waiting that four months to get pregnant is excruciating at times. And so I can only imagine my heart goes out to anybody that goes through that. Because like when I had my miscarriage, like it took me three months to get pregnant with that miscarriage. Then I was four months pregnant when I miscarried. And then it took me like three more months to get pregnant. So like I felt like, it, like in all honesty, I felt like it took me like nine months to get pregnant. So I just wanted to know, let everybody know that I feel very grateful and blessed. You know, if I can't go an amusement park ride or a water park ride for a year or go in a jacuzzi, then so be it. I'm willing to sacrifice that because it's worth it. And I feel grateful and blessed. For some reason, right now in this pregnancy, I wish I could eat more vegetables, but vegetables seem to make me like turned off. Like I just, the thought of vegetables make me want to gag. I still eat the vegetables. I still try to force myself to eat them, but I'm definitely eating more carbs lately and more sweets because I'm craving that, craving that. I don't give in to my cravings all the time. I've actually only gained five pounds in this pregnancy so far. In fact, the midwife told me that she would like to see me by my 20 week bump date to have gained 10 pounds during this pregnancy. There'll be times I gain like two pounds that month and then there'll be times I gain like six pounds that month and then the midwife is telling me, um, you might wanna lay off the sweets or you might wanna do that. 
what are you eating? And um, I'm like, you know, I'm doing the same thing all the time. I guess the baby just went through a growth spurt. One thing I'm starting to get that I've experienced in my pregnancy for all my pregnancies is out of breath. The out of breath feeling. And I hate that, but you know, you, you work through all your different pregnancy symptoms you get through pregnancy, but I'll get like out of breath and it only gets worse as I get more and more and more pregnant. But it starting right about now, like when I go up a flight of steps, I'm like, <sighs> so I'm sure other people have gotten that too. Only it's going to get worse from here. And I haven't experienced heartburn yet, but I usually get heartburn very bad in pregnancy and usually starts around 20 weeks. So it should be coming soon, my heartburn. I'm not looking forward to that. Um, and I try to stay away from Tums, but I need it. Like a lot of times I end up needing it. And if you have any other suggestions for me for heartburn, I'll take it. I'm really excited for my natural birth experience like I experienced with my other four kids. And I hope that it happens that way again this time around. And, it, and I experience it no different. I had a 11 hour labor for my first child. My second child, I had a two hour labor, literally. And then it went super fast with him. And then my third child and my fourth child, I had a five hour labor. It actually went up slightly. It actually went up slightly and I was told that that's normal. And the midwife told me that typically your second baby is your fastest baby. And then it goes up slightly again after that. And the reason why it goes up slightly after again after that is they say the second pregnancy usually goes the fastest because because you've already done it before you've already gone through delivery before so your body recognizes that you've done it before and so it's easier than your first but it's better than your you know your next pregnancies you know, like number three number four because your muscles are still you know stronger and they haven't stretched out for other like a ton of pregnancies yet so they when they contract to push the baby out, they work better. Yeah, your muscles just work more efficiently. So that's why they say that usually it's like that and it was like that for me and it was like that for my mom. So I don't know, tell me if it was like that for you guys. So I'm really hoping that this time around, it goes like the other kids. It probably I'm hoping that it's like about, you know, no more than four or five hours delivery. And they actually said when I pushed my last child out, Kaliana, my fourth one, I pushed her out in one big huge push like I just um in one big huge two minute push and they said I didn't breathe at all my face was turning blue and I, I don't know at that point I was just like she's coming out and she's coming out now and I was on a mission to get her out because when you get to the pushing phase you're just like ready for it to be done but yeah I'll, I'll be planning to talk about the birth stories of each of my children individually um at some point Talia, Cohen, Brody, and Kelliana because I've experienced natural childbirth for all of them so far. So I do plan on talking about them in another video and showing and showing like clips of them being born. All right guys, drum roll. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I'm good. I'm about ready to I'm about ready to tell you guys the gender of number 5. And yeah. All right guys, time for the big reveal for Jewel for Real. What am I having, boy or girl? The time is now. Ready? Here it goes. Woo! Yay, so it's a girl. We were excited really no matter what. We had two girls and two boys, so we wouldn't have been happy with a boy or a girl. We really, this time around, had no preference. We were excited no matter what it was, and it ended up being a girl. So the three girls are gonna go in the one bedroom, but I am very good at trying to maneuver things and figure things out. It's only where they sleep and get dressed, but we just have to figure out where all the girls, little girls clothes and shoes are gonna go because it's a lot of, they, girls have a lot of clothes and shoes. And in, a, in the next bump date, I might show you guys my thoughts and what I'm gonna, what I think I'm gonna do to overcome that issue. I know it's possible, I've seen it done before. So yeah, but we're excited, a little girl, and but we don't have a name. We had a name if it was a boy, but we don't have a name if it's a girl. And we're trying to figure it out because we would like to do a name reveal sometime in the next month or two. You can give your suggestions below what you might, what names you think. Now keep in mind, I like unique names. I don't like typical normal names. I don't like made up names either, but I just don't like typical normal names that are in the top 100 or 200. Talia and Kaliana are both like more rare names, especially Kaliana. 
So I, I tend to like the more unusual, unique names. So if you have any suggestions for unusual and unique names, you can leave them below. I'd consider it because we don't have a name yet. Yay! <laughs> Until next time, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure to comment below on name suggestions or videos you'd like to see in the future or anything else you want to just put down there in the comment section. I enjoy seeing your comments. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. I, I plan on keep coming out with bump dates. Until next time, guys, fly high and dream big.